Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is your Geek Out for today. I wanted to cover a series of Google's announcements, and believe me, there are plenty. They had to reschedule their live event due to Hurricane Sandy, and they made the right decision there. But I gotta tell you, everyone's having a field day with everything that Google announced, including the Nexus 4, a 4.7-inch, 320 DPI phone running Android 4.2. The 8-gig version will be available for $299, 16-gig version for $349, but no LTE. I'm going to do my best to get a hold of one to unbox for you. The Nexus 7 got a refresh, including 3G support. Yeah, my 16-gig version that I bought for $250, well, it still works, you know, I would say quite well. See, I keep it charged. But now this is available for $199. I could have saved 50 bucks, but hey, it still works well. If you want a 32 gig version, it'll only set you back $250. Sales for the new Nexus 7s start on 11.13, as well as sales for the Nexus 10, a 10 inch tablet with a 300 DPI, 200, um, 200. That would, be, that would be small. 2560 by 1600 resolution, uh, 16 gig version for 399 and a 32 gig version for $499. That will be very iPad-esque, or at least Google's attempt to eat into Apple's market with the iPad. Not the iPad mini, which would you know, possibly be competing with this Android device. Uh, the Nexus 10 should specifically compete with this device, the, the the iPad, the original iPad, the new new iPad. I don't know what they're going to call it these days. So I will be ordering my own Nexus 10 and unbox it live for you on YouTube. Stay tuned uh, for that. Of course, you just follow the schedule and announcements, me on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and beyond. Uh, Google Play also has a series of updates, including song matching. And Europe should be happy because they're getting to play more in Google Play now. Google Now also has some enhancements, including getting smarter and faster. I believe... In my estimation, if Google Now was Google's version of Siri, Google did a better job with Google Now than Apple did with Siri. Bottom line, uh, Google Now works exceedingly well, and now it's going to work even better than it's worked before. Google Now is contextually relevant, and that's why I appreciate using Google Now, specifically on my Nexus 7. So what else? Uh, so we've got Google Wireless Charging Orbs coming. Uh, so if you wanted to use the support for uh, wireless charging in Nexus 4, you could do that with an orb. Although I don't know how many of those media orbs sold. Remember the, they announced that a while ago? Did anybody get, what were they called? I can't even, I don't know anybody who got one. Uh, then there's Android 4.2 with these enhancements. And by the way, uh, they're saying it's jelly beans, so it's not really a full revision. Gesture typing is there, so if you like swift key or swipe, you might be happy there. Multiple user support on tablets. Very cool. So if you get a Nexus 10 like I will, you could pass it around the family and each person would have their own profile. It's been happening in Google Chrome for quite some time, so it made sense they brought it to Android. Uh, wireless TV display, so it's a technology much like AirPlay. It's just probably going to have broader industry support. Photosphere, which is panoramic photos. They basically took the technology they used for Google Street View and put it into the palm of your hand. Uh, and I think that is good. I, I gotta tell you, I, I haven't been that impressed with the iOS 6 version of Panorama. Still too many jaggies and overlappings that just don't really sit well with me. We'll see how this version works though. Uh, lock screen improvements, including widgets and a swipe to camera. Although uh, I have had the swipe to camera on my Samsung Galaxy phones, the Note 2 and the Galaxy S3. That's a good feature to, uh, to bring over to Android in general though. Expandable notifications for the win. Once again, showing that Google's doing notifications much better than Apple's been handling them in iOS. Message zooming on Gmail to automatically resize the fonts so that they fit within the, well, the width or the height of the screen that you happen to be viewing them on. Although, I gotta tell you, I'm not incredibly impressed with the Gmail app on Android. It, it's kind of clunky to me. I've used much better apps on other, app, uh, other platforms, plus a host of accessibility improvements. But the big announcement to me isn't all these products, isn't all the updates, it's the fact that Google's getting its story together. They're providing that experience, and I'm telling you, this is something that just cannot be talked about in specifications. Yes, we, we might want to know how fast or, or, or how big and, 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 and the details, but without that comprehensive experience, it's just not there. If the hardware doesn't work with the software, working with the service, it's just not there. And Google is getting their story together. That is the big announcement. 
this type of experience that Google's providing is going to make it easier for you to buy into the ecosystem because you're not just necessarily just buying a phone. You may be buying a phone that operates with your TV. You may be buying a tablet that interoperates with your phone. I mean, buying into that entire experience of content and service and software, the experience is everything. And Google is getting their story together. Uh, it is exciting. Uh, even if you're not an Android fan, you got to admit, having competitive experiences in the marketplace keeps everybody on their toes. It gives us more options, and that's what I appreciate most. Uh, I certainly will be getting a, a few of these updates, as well as, as I said, the Nexus 10. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Were you excited by the series of announcements? Am I the only one?